So anyway, thanks for having me. I'm at the well, yeah, no, we, podcast, we can do the man. intro now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, man, if you've been watching, you know what I mean, and you don't know who this is, if, if you know, I'm sure you know who it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you don't recognize the face, you definitely recognize the voice, man. Listen, what today's guest is a radio legend. You know what I'm saying? And if we're talking about Houston radio, <laughs> like, we're talking about a radio god, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? He's up there with the gods in radio when it comes to this Houston thing, man. I'm talking about when we loved the radio in those 90s and that early 2000s, man. The the best radio years, in my opinion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? T. Gray was right there in the mix, man, doing his thing. DJing, he had to say what you want to say segment. Yeah. You know what I mean? They had a lot of stuff going down. You know what I mean? Just, man, I a whole just legendary things, shit, man. man. You know what I mean? Produced for, for Big Mo, for Pimp C. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Got records with Roe. Got new records yeah. coming with Lil O. You know man. what I mean? Just put out a beat tape called man. a gray tape, man, which is one of the best 17, 18 minute listening experiences that you can check out. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, I'm talking him up. You know what I'm hey. saying? Hey, man, just happened to be my homeboy and he's here today, man. T Gray. What's going on? Donnie, I, I really, first of all, I appreciate them words, but I, I watching the growth. It's been a couple of years since I've been in here and having the opportunity to watch this thing really grow from however many subscribers to over 10,000 and bigger and keep getting bigger. Uh, I'm proud of you. Thanks for having your boy back. But keep this shit going, my nigga. Like, what you're doing right now is, is definitely necessary culture-wise. And this is part, you know, I, I stay uh, quiet a lot these days because I'm a little older. I'm a dad. I'm raising my son. I'm, I'm in a studio at home. I like to be at home a lot. I'm old. I like to be at the house. So I'll just sit back. And, and just watch and see where the game is going. And if, and if folks like you keep doing what you're doing, shout out to my man Kiati too, he's doing a lot. There's folks that, that like y'all are to keep this thing going um, underground wise, but taking this underground shit. I see you putting K Reno and all these people that need to be heard of that you might not hear from every day unless you just locked in with them, you know what I'm saying, and tune into what they got going on. But you bringing all that to the, to the, to the masses, I feel like you got some, the masses now, you're getting to the masses. I appreciate it. Just being man, I, a, a OG in this it, now. I appreciate it. <laughs> and that means a lot. Because, I mean, I already told you, bro. You know what I'm saying? When right. you come to that radio shit, man, like. Man, I was. You, that was, you uh, did it with the, with the, with the best, I man. appreciate it. I was, uh, I was blessed. I was lucky. Lucky and blessed at the same time. I yeah. didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. Uh, I just happened to be in the right spot. A lot of people fought and put me in the right spots. And didn't. And fought to keep me from doing dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Keep me out of bad spots too. So I had a lot of support in, in that. Uh, when you say dumb shit, what what, what just you know what I'm saying? Like? The streets wouldn't let me. They like, nah, you don't need to be out here doing yeah. this. Yeah. You, man, I didn't. I hadn't. Like a lot of kids, it, it, especially during my era, I'm sure now, drink and smoke starts. You know what I'm saying? Young, high school, junior high. And so yeah. I didn't do a thing. I didn't even have a curfew when I was a kid. I started DJing. I had a first club when I was 15. We're doing parties at 14, 15, 16. My parents trusted me so much that I never had no curfew and shit like that because I wasn't out there wild. Hmm. I was really out there. I was the same kind of kid too. Yeah. Like my mom could pretty much trust. Like if you yeah. said go and do this, and yeah. this that's what yep. I'm gonna do. It ain't gonna yep. be no. Mm -mm. I ain't gonna put no whip on it. And you know we would mean? be out in the middle of the night, come home in the middle of the night, and I'm coming clean, sober, not no nothing. You know what I'm saying? That was me. I was an athlete back then too. But it's interesting though because you and your brother are close, and he, you know, be the completely opposite. opposite. Yeah, yeah. Gray was. Uh, he did things uh, a lot different than me, and that's you know, siblings sometimes that it happens. I hate that it happened. I wish that he and I would have gelled a lot more in that way i think that he and i collectively an impact would have been a fool was it ever times when you would tell him like hey bro come on man let's do some or, of this other or stuff when he or... would tell me hey man stop doing regular speed stuff slow it down hmm. straight up that's how i met slim yeah. was through lee you know what right. i'm saying and and so he would always man slow it down man come on you can do that man i'm over here like here we go yo here we go <laughs> yo like nah man i'm doing my own thing and, and it you know me staying in my lane worked out. I think becoming the, the type of club DJ and that the energy that I, I brought forth, it helped me get, you know, looking back the arena gigs and these certain certain things that I've had, it's because I had that energy. It wasn't too laid back. Hmm. Um, and that's just part of me. But there is that part, shit, that um, I remember Lee would play me screw stuff. And I didn't like the music. I didn't like the chop song. I liked the flows. And I heard uh, Kiki. On the, on the on the you're a customer flow. Hmm. Might as well give me an extra the OZ, OZ man. Yeah. And I'm like that. That's the part that I really fell in love with about slow down. Shit was the flows. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which is that's crazy because for for me it took me. I had to gravitate to the flow. Okay, so it's the songs. It was first the, the DJing really. Right. I was just amazed at like how you doing? How you doing shit? that? See, but I because I come from DJing yeah. and shit. And I was like, oh, screw. I met screw. It was cool, but it was something about them boys flows, and then him. 
the way he had them on the play, it was just, it made sense. I was like, Screw is a dope fucking producer. Hmm. Really, really was. His ear, all that West Coast shit he was jamming. I saw your po- your tweet the other day talking about what songs now with because right, right, right. cause Screw's ear was impeccable. Great ear. There's a lot of West Coast shit that, from Spice and all them boys that we wouldn't have known about. Never. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Let's Screw put them on the tapes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it's a whole lot of Bay dudes that I'm cool with because of back then. 40 and them, you know what I'm saying? They would come down, mess with Mean Green, mess with Screw, and I got cool with a lot of them Bay dudes because of that. Hmm. Sidebar, we got to talk about Mean Green because you, you had linked me up with Mean Green and mean, me and Mean have had these incredible... <laughs> Talks that I wish really? I would have recorded. You know what I mean? But good. Me and Green would talk for like an hour or two at a time. Yes, you know yes, what I'm saying? Yeah. He'd get in here, do his impressions. He do. Mm-hmm. Tell him, he told me a story. <laughs> he said he blew my mind because he said he managed Pac earlier uh-huh. in his career, yep. and he was telling me a time about Pac getting stuck at the airport and your mom or somebody or like me took yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Carol worked for uh, Continental. It was Continental Airlines at the time. She retired. Uh, United Airlines, but yeah, mom's. Uh, I don't even remember that damn story. Like, I just know she hooked it up and set up and set him up and got him up out of here. Yeah, <laughs> he tripped me out. He's like, Yeah, man, you got ST great, man. I got stuck at the airport this morning. I'll be forgetting about that damn story. Damn, yeah. you know what's crazy shit about my mom and I? So, my mom was in Vegas and Pac got shot. She went to the fight, it was her 40th birthday. Oh, shit. I was in LA, a big guy shot. I went to the Soul Train Awards that year. No, and it was shit. with my man Carl and them. Shout out to the Magical Soul Brothers. They they the FBI feds confiscated that tape because they were filming the Peterson Automotive Museum and shit. All that shit happened. Anyway, yeah, we, it's crazy to think about my mom and I. It's no both shit. Both the icons. Yeah, when he told me, I'm like, Dog, T. Gray got the coolest mama in the oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, she's she, she straight, man. She uh, she's straight. I, I'm glad that she gets to hear her son on 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 uh on, on my tape too. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's good to have my brother's voice on there. How often do you get to keep up with your brother now? You know what I'm saying? We, sure we, we communicate quite often. I'm going to say at least a few times a month. Hmm. Um, you know, we, we make sure we reach out. Uh, you know, he's been gone a while. My brother uh, in the feds, in case y'all didn't know, I ain't going to tell y'all what he did. I'll let him tell y'all one day. But, uh, <laughs> or what happened. I'm going to say what he did because I'm not But why he's there. Uh, but uh, we, we stay. It's been, he's been gone for like 11, 12 years or something like that. Hmm. It was a long time. Um, but you know, we still keep up his kids all that he's still as close as you can be you know what I'm saying being away and, be, and getting being gone for that long but wait 11 12 years. oh so he was pretty much an adult then he was yeah yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's already yeah, yeah, yeah. he's grown yeah. grown he's grown he left yeah, yeah, yeah. He's super grown when he get back right 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 but um, you know what I mean he's doing well his family's you know doing well considering the circumstances and shit you know and we try our best to as a fan, we keep pushing. Yeah. And um, I'm just glad I was able to do this. It's been a long time coming. I did an album 20 years ago. Never put it out. It wasn't ever supposed to come out. There's some shit that was said on it that was foul. Kids hmm. not knowing and just being arrogant and doing stuff. And uh, I had a, uh, this is when things kind of started ending with the station. I had a song that like literally right when I had the wax press, we were pressing up wax and stuff. A rule came down that said DJs couldn't have their music played on the air, hmm. and that pissed me off. I was mad because you had a Hatter that did this thing. You had GT Main who was doing shit. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of people just putting out records and doing their own thing, and getting support. I started remixing, did a couple Beyonce remixes, got paid, and whoop. And then I was like, Yeah, you know what? Let's go for this. Met some cool dudes off the radio, off the roll call uh, from A Leaf. As a matter of fact, I'm, uh, Jason and Chad mouth and play and we put together all kind of chronic situation you know what hmm. I'm saying I had my had my dog pound and, and whoop whoop and and right when it's completed you know this rule comes down and it just and I'm young I'm 26 5 25 maybe at the time and uh, feelings was hurt <laughs> no lie go, but no other way to put it my feelings was hurt like yo y'all disrespect I've given you all this everything I've never said no to any job, asked anything, and then you know, I can't like, get my record played. Mm-hmm. Like it's disrespect, and I'm not trying to beg to play my record. Like if niggas want to play it, they're gonna play it. You know what I'm saying? But just not even having that opportunity to even present it and see if dudes like it or whatever. It's just and then just things started going south. Hmm. Not really south. Nothing happened. The ratings were good. I was still on top. You know, just. But just, that was that was kind of. The, you just realize the relationship is not respected. It's not reciprocal. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so you have you start looking like it's what you can do for me, not what I can do. Yeah. And so you get, yeah. you start 
the 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 real the the matrix is is pulled <laughs> from over, like oh this is how this is I get it now and it changed my position in life for forever no you, I might not have been as every day in your face but I did things in my own terms instead of everybody else's terms since then hmm. so literally from late twenties to now it's been on me and I take that there's been bumps in the road there's been hard times and shit but. I'll take that too, and then I, I I know me, I know what I can take. I think I know anyway, and, and you can hit me all you want. I'm a I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna bounce back. You know what I'm saying? Every single time. Danny Houston. Danny Houston. Danny Houston. Danny Houston. Danny Houston.